Hi. <laughs> hey, can we pull you aside Fresh for a second, complete? Hi. Hi? Hi there. Hi! Yeah, this is gonna sound funny. Peculiar, really. But we heard... Uh, through the grapevine. ...that you had an unusual... A condition. ...accident that left you... Unusual. ...with one leg. And we were wondering if... Uh, By any chance... You might give us... Loan us! Loan us, yeah. Your, uh, sock. Sock. Your sock. Okay, before we begin, I have to preface this a little bit. Normally when I review games, it's my goal to play through the game in its entirety, or at the very least, play enough of it that I can say confidently that this is basically entirely what this game is about. Unfortunately, I could not do that with this one due to some technical errors. So while I do have about 10 hours worth of footage here, and I intend to keep playing this more in my own time, I have not completed this game nor can I confidently say I've seen everything it has to offer. So take this more as a first impressions type of thing than a standard proper review that I'd normally do. This is Anachronox, a game I have never heard of. I thought I did at one point when it was brought to my attention, but I was actually thinking of a completely different PC game called Aquinox. This game was brought to my attention by someone who had said that they had become so disillusioned after playing a specific RPG that they kind of gave up on RPGs and console games in its entirety until they played this on PC. To me, that says that this must be one hell of an RPG. It was brought to you, it was made by the good folks at Ion Storm, a company that has something of a well-deserved reputation in that they made a game so bad, it is an actual life goal of mine to own a boxed copy to send to John Romero so that he can sign it with an apology. That's an actual life goal of mine, I seriously want to do that. But, while people often like to point out how bad Dai Katana was, and how Ion Storm was pretty much sunk by it, less people tend to point out that Ion Storm also put out Deus Ex, which is typically considered to be one of the best PC games ever made. And I would agree with that statement. Well, this game, I would say, falls more into the latter category than the former. This definitely isn't the giant bomb of terrible that was Daikatana, and honestly, after playing it, while I've certainly not finished it, I would say it's in my favorite PC games of all time. Now, I'm primarily a console gamer, so take that for what it's worth, but still, I'd say that's decently high praise. Now, the story follows Sly Boots presumably of some relation to Risky Boots, a down-on-his-luck detective that, well, look, his introduction is that he gets his face pounded in by a gangster and then thrown out a window, so he's had a good place in life. I'm, I'm kind of jealous, honestly. He's sort of sent scrambling to try and collect money to pay off this gangster, or, well, yeah, you, you'd kind of know what's going to happen should he not actually deliver on this money. Such a job leads him to take on some of the most dangerous missions, as well as dust up on his private detective skills, and, uh, you know, figure out some mysterious artifacts and try and get around this world, and ultimately, you know, save his own life, using his street smarts. Now, like I said, I haven't gotten all that far into this game due to some technical errors, especially early on in the game, and I'm not 100% sure if that's old game running on new computer not working terribly well. I was inclined to think that, but then I also ran to a moment where I got a message saying that this text box was undefined and should not be visible, so it could be that this game has issues. But while I couldn't get very far into the story necessarily, what I did see I was thoroughly impressed with. First and foremost is the world itself. I mean, looking at the opening cutscene where you see Anachronox, a world within a world that is incredibly technologically advanced, but then sort of abandoned by a precursor race only to be inhabited by convicts, that's an amazing setting. But then seeing how this world is built and the technical aspects just in the opening cutscene alone, I'm inclined to think that was nothing but a technical flex, but I gotta say, it looked really intriguing and I loved this world design immediately. The world and its lore are set up so perfectly and there is just tons of it to be found. For example, these little creatures here, these are save points. And you know, if this was any other game, you know, you could go over, save your game and then boom, you'll just respawn there when you get a game over. And that happens here too, but let me put it the way this game puts it. These creatures exist 
through all of time. They experience every single moment of time all at once, and if you come into contact with it, should something happen in your life end, they are capable of recalling that exact moment to bring you back. Now, sure, that's a really flowered up way of saying, hey, it's a save point, but you know what? I gotta appreciate that they're actually working all this stuff into the lore, and they've actually thought about this very, very deeply. You want another example? All right. You see your little mouse cursor? No, you don't, because that's actually a metal paper airplane containing the soul of your dead assistant so that she can direct you around the world and control your camera perspective. Seriously, like everything in this game seems to actually have deeply written lore, and it's kind of amazing. Everything about this game feels like it has a lot of deep lore and a, a lot of actual technical aspects on the how and whys of this world actually work. And I'm very thoroughly impressed with how they wrote this. The next thing that really impressed me about this story and the writing is the characters themselves. Because every character feels like they are written to be completely different. Like they're their own unique person. And you know, you can play a lot of different games and sure, you can see a character's story unfold and you can see them develop as characters and stuff, but they're usually all written from like the same person. Whereas in this game, it feels like every character has a completely unique voice. For example, our grizzled detective, Sly Boots, has like this whole running like PI narrative going on in his head that you don't get to hear until he talks. He's a total snarky jerk and yet you can see when he talks that he does sort of bring out that sort of detective monologue as he's going on. He goes out of his way to embellish and to use turns of phrase to make everything just seem so much more interesting than just, you know, the world around him just being the world he's used to. He actually goes out of his way to sort of give his perspective and his take on everything, all while doing it in his own unique tone and voice. And again, it comes across as sort of like that film noir PI sort of thing, which is definitely a cool tone to take with your main character, especially in a sci-fi sort of cyberpunk setting. Your second character, Grumpus, well, he's he's a muttery old man who likes to take advantage of the fact he's a muttery old man, and uh, that's that's actually an ability in combat. It's, uh, well... <laughs> It's special, but he's definitely someone who's focused entirely on his passion and his main drive of understanding like this mystical past technology nonsense. And he's not afraid to put his own life at risk if it means getting a little bit closer to the truth. And then you've got your little robot buddy pal who's, well, he, he's basically every dumb kid sidekick ever kind of mixed with Gollum. He's a little annoying, honestly. But you know, he's definitely written as a completely different character than everyone else. All the characters here definitely feel like they were written basically like they were completely different people who all had their own different tones. And as much as I love RPGs and stuff, oftentimes you do end up with characters that all sound like they're kind of being spoken with the same voice, you know? Whereas this one, it feels like every character has like their exact own unique way of speaking. In addition, NPCs. You know how you go into an RPG and you talk to a guy and you get them to say something, whether they're important or not, they usually have like one or two text boxes, that's it. Even the most pointless NPCs in this game have usually like five or six completely different lines of dialogue to have with you, different stuff depending on which character you choose to talk to them with, as well as different reactions depending on who you're talking to, which is kind of interesting. They even have a line of dialogue to say, look, stop talking to me, you've exhausted all my dialogue options, go away and talk to someone else. I have to think that the writing in this game was one of the top priorities. The story that I've seen so far I'm thoroughly impressed with, the lore is really engaging, and I'm not gonna lie, it's one of the biggest things that gripped me about this, because, you know, as I've kind of said before, this game sort of has a film noir meets cyberpunk sci-fi kind of feel to it, which is a really neat theme to work with, as well as just, you know, the mechanics and the functionality of everything in this game seems to be so well thought out that I have to imagine they put a lot of effort just in this alone. The story thus far, I'm thoroughly impressed with. I think it's one of the highest points I can give this game. Now the gameplay to Anachronox, I'm kind of a little bit more mixed about honestly, because it feels like they kind of smooshed two different games together 
and one of these things I feel like they did a little bit better than the other. On one hand, you have Anachronox the RPG. It's a standard turn-based RPG, although it does have some light tactical elements. Certain characters like Sly have a ranged attack in their gun, whereas other characters like Grumpus and your robot pal have melee attacks. Melee characters can only attack characters near them, so they have to be positioned strategically in the environment to take out their opponents. You can also move your characters around to avoid attacks, as well as to get around different obstacles and interact with the environment to potentially lay some traps and hazards and give yourself a strategic advantage. It's a neat idea, but I feel like the RPG elements to this game are just a little bit lacking you know? And, and I feel like they honestly break a little bit of flow. For example, there aren't really random battles in this game. Instead, you can see the enemies that are going to fight you on screen when you approach them. And once you get in their detection range, well then you're in a fight and the enemies go to their starting battle positions. And here's where things start being a little less good. See, when a battle starts, wherever the enemy is when you encounter them wandering around on the overworld, they slowly sort of amble their way towards their starting positions, and this can take anywhere between two or three seconds. So you could be like five seconds into a fight before the fight even proper starts. And while this is turn-based, it's also turn-based in the sense that earlier Final Fantasies were, where you are absolutely taking turns, but it's based on a timer. And these timers feel almost painfully slow. You could speed them up by 100%, and I think the combat would have a much, much brisker and more fun pace. In addition, the areas that are typically filled with a lot of enemies, at least the dungeons, they feel like they just kind of drag on a lot. Indeed, some of the environments in this game just feel very labyrinthine in nature, which, while early on they do try and sort of limit where you can go, finding your way around kind of gets confusing after a while, to the point where I just started taking the taxi service everywhere just because it was so much less confusing having to figure out where to go. That wasn't great, but again, they were trying to set up like a huge world. This game is really, really big. Excellent taxi service though. Five stars on TripAdvisor. The RPG elements in this game, they work well, I suppose. I like the tactical elements and I like that it does a relatively decent RPG, but it feels just sort of like it hurts the pacing of the game overall because now we get to the second half of the game that is Anachronox, which is the PC adventure game, which I think it does a lot better, especially with the theme of sort of a film noir sort of thing, where you're constantly wandering around this world, collecting objects, interacting with people, gathering information, and using each character's individual, unique, specific abilities to solve puzzles and further advance the plot. It feels a lot faster paced, and it's a lot more engaging because, again, you're actively working with the narrative than necessarily stopping to fight some things, and they're actually throwing you constantly a bunch of different challenges and stuff in order to advance. For example, in the short period of time I'd recorded, I had to tail a person without getting caught in order to gain some information. I had to talk to a random NPC that I could only discern was the one I needed by looking at a slight difference in animation. I had to track down a missing person by trading an alien some mysteriously secret info about some guys we barely know, but still. I had to gain a disguise to look like a scientist, steal all the information of everything ever, as well as take potentially two different paths in order to discover exactly how to gain tickets to get past a certain barrier. Oh, and also I tried to help solve a murder and pick a lock into a private residence, all while being almost nearly murdered by security. Seriously, that was, that was pretty scary. And that was a cutscene, I, I felt that was actually genuinely pretty intense. So, you know, and bear in mind, that's only within the first few hours of the game. This game really throws a lot of different concepts at you really, really quickly in order to keep the adventuring fresh. And like I said, every character has their own unique abilities. For example, Sly can pick locks so he can get into places he shouldn't be and, you know, find some treasure and stuff, get some information. Whereas Grumpus, he can yammer at people until they just beg him to leave them alone, uh, which is more than a little interesting. Pal, he can hack any sort of mechanical pattern, and each one of these little abilities gives you a little bit of a mini game. so it's not just clicking a thing and telling your guy to go do that, no, you have to actively take part in their escapades, which makes it a lot more interesting and engaging. And then of course there's the whole collecting objects and talking to people in order to ultimately progress through the game. In the short period of time I've recorded, they have thrown so many different concepts my way that the adventuring never got dull only when it was slowed down by combat and again combat's fine but it just feels like they 
thought out the adventuring a little bit more, again, tied to the whole narrative. I don't know if they just felt like they weren't entirely confident in the whole adventure game aspect, so they felt they needed to include combat, but honestly, I think this game might be a little bit faster paced and a little better paced if they just focused on the adventure aspects. Combat's totally fine, but, you know, it just feels like it slows down the pacing a little bit. Also, this game totally gets me in the sense that there are collectible tro achievements in this game in the form of tacos. Totally arbitrary collectible objects. They were saying that far before I ever did, but still, I appreciate that at least this game agrees with me. Now, if I had any big issues with Anachronox outside of maybe some pacing stuff and, you know, some bugs, the only other issues I have were camera control's a little bit iffy because you have to control it using your mouse cursor. Um, you use that to point and click on things to interact with objects, of course, but to manipulate the camera, you have to sort of push it to the side of the screen and rotate it around your character, and it just feels a little bit clunky and slow and a little bit clumsy. It's not bad or anything, but it does take some getting used to, and I feel like it could be a bit more responsive. The only other issue I had control-wise might entirely be for me, but I found menuing it just felt a little bit convoluted to get around. It wasn't great, but I assume if you're someone who's a little bit more used to using a keyboard and stuff, that will be a little bit less of a problem. Overall, gameplay-wise, Anachronox is quite a fun little game. It mixes elements of RPG and adventure games, and while I don't think the RPGs are as standout as the adventure game aspects, I think it does both very, very well. That said, there were a couple of issues, and this is part of the reason why I had to sort of take so long to put this out, and why this is more of a first impressions than a proper full-on review, but this game, it has issues. Uh, every time I had to deal with text boxes in combat, the game would freak out a little bit and softlock. Like, early on there's a training montage where you have to go through several fights to learn the basics of combat, and I got through the very last one, and at this point I had been recording for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and at the end of this, uh, your trainer goes up to congratulate you just to say you're done training, and the game couldn't figure out if I was still in combat or if I was supposed to interact with the text boxes, so I was just sort of stuck and I couldn't do anything. Uh, another time I tried to get through that fight, the game actually dropped a second instance of that fight on top of me, which basically doubled the audio, making it really loud and obnoxious, and as someone who's somewhat sensitive to sound, that wasn't super fun, but Again, it kind of soft-locked after that because it didn't really understand if I was supposed to be in a fight still or if it was done. Outside of combat, the only real issues I really ran into, however, were some simple pathing issues. I tried to collect an item once and the character kind of got a little bit stuck in the environment, but he figured out how to get past that eventually. The combat does seem to have the lion's share of the issues, including, once again, a dialogue box that says that this combat panel is undefined and this message should not be visible. So I'm inclined to say this game might not have been as properly bug tested as it should have been. Outside of that, the only other problem I had that was kind of something that affected how well I could play this was that the camera work made this game really, really hard to play for extended periods of time. If you're the kind of person who has trouble with FOVs, this might be an issue for you. But this game sort of has this really almost ingenious directorial style. From what I can tell, it seems like they wanted to make this game more or less shot with a single camera without cutting anywhere, with, of course, the exceptions of loading screens. So in order to get around, like, cutscenes and stuff where the camera should theoretically cut away in order to sort of get around the environment and stuff, instead it'll sort of, like, rotate around characters and take, like, these weird sort of obtuse angles that, honestly, after an extended period of time, made me feel a little bit nauseous. Like, I really appreciate that they don't want to cut the camera to sort of take you out of gameplay and take you out of the immersion of this character. I really, really appreciate that, and I think they honestly went super far out of the way to stick to this one vision that I think they did really well, at least from a technical standpoint. But from an actual experience and getting to play this, it felt like nausea after about two hours, so I had to be really careful about playing this for extended periods of time, unfortunately. That said, if you're not prone to, say, motion sickness and FOVs don't bother you too much, this will probably be fine for you. Those are really the only complaints I have gameplay-wise about it, is just, you know, it has some issues here and there where it likes to softlock, so you're gonna have to save pretty frequently. Fortunately, the save point creatures of immortality are dotted around the map pretty generously, so as long as you, you know, save at each one, you shouldn't lose too much time. But again, the, the camera work might be a bit of a problem for some people. 
The overall presentation to Anachronox, I think it looks pretty good for the time. I love the overall aesthetic of the world. Like I said, it's kind of got like a film noir meets cyberpunk meets sci-fi look. The world design, the mechanics behind it are fantastic. The character designs are really ingenious. I love all the different aliens and stuff. They have really, once again, thought out this world and the lore of this galaxy that they've created really well. They've put in a lot of time and effort and it shows. There is one issue visually with this game and that is combat animation is a little bit lacking. Like, every attack has its own animation and stuff, but dodging just doesn't exist. Like, they just sort of shift the character models to the side when they need to dodge instead of having them, like, jump out of the way or something. Which is really weird because they already all have lunging animations. I feel like you could just use that and, like, play it in reverse to have them hop back or something. It wouldn't be a great solution, but, you know, it would be a little bit better than having their static model just sort of shift to the left or right. Audio-wise, the soundtrack is, you know, it's decent, it's serviceable. From what I've experienced, it has sort of like a nice synth beat going on for it, for the starting place of Anachronox, anyway. The combat theme's a little generic, and the first dungeon I went into, again, it wasn't all that fantastic, but it worked for what it needed to do. It's not super special, but I think it works relatively well. And the voice acting is excellent. Like I said at the beginning, when it's combined with the writing, it really does give each character their own sort of voice. Not necessarily purely audibly, but you know, it makes them feel like they were completely different written characters with completely different perspectives and like viewpoints and stuff. The voice actors really did manage to bring the uniqueness of every character out, at least from what I've experienced thus far. Now, if you want a copy of Anachronox, it is available through Steam for about $8. I have to give a big shout out and thank you to the man, the myth, the legend, Sly Boots himself for hooking me up with a copy. And all he wanted in return was a link to the Steam page so other people who think this looks interesting should go and grab it. And I think that if you like PC adventure games and you like RPGs, this one will definitely be interesting. I personally think this is one of the most interesting PC games I've ever played, and I would probably put this in my top 5, definitely top 10. And while I think it's got a few issues and the RPG elements kind of interfere with the adventure game elements a little bit and hurt the flow, overall I think that the world and the story, the writing, the mythos, everything about this is something worth experiencing, and for $8? Yeah, I'd say keep this on your radar, because Anachronox? I think it's definitely something special, and I quite enjoyed it, and honestly, I'm probably going to be playing a lot more of this in my free time. So far, I'd say Anachronox is probably one of the best games I've played in 2021. If you like RPGs or PC adventure games, you like, you like film noir, you like cyberpunk, hell, this is a better game than Cyberpunk 2077 was as a cyberpunk game, and it's decent sci-fi too. You know what? This game does a lot of things, and it does it relatively well. It's not without its blemishes but you know from what I've played I can say that for eight dollars I would highly recommend this game if it looks interesting to you because honestly I think it's pretty special